The Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Blockchain Super Conference is coming to Dallas, Texas, February 16, 17, and 18 in 2018. If you know of a better way to get the latest insider knowledge about crypto, to hear directly from the top minds in this field, to interact personally with 800 fellow crypto lovers, hodlers, investors, miners, traders, developers, and founders, then I'd like to hear about it. If you don't, then you don't want to miss out. Register today for the Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Blockchain Super Conference. Go to BitcoinSuperConference.com and register today as a super early bird to get the lowest rates on tickets and hotel rooms. That's BitcoinSuperConference.com. Welcome to Almost Here, Round the Corner of Future Technology podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies poised to transform our lives for better or worse are the focus of this podcast. Almost Here means these technologies are now here and starting to be used. We're just around the corner from Bitcoin to artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. Hello and welcome everyone to the Future Tech Podcast. My name is Josh Thomas and I'm here with Mark Ristelli from Cantrade.com. Hey, Mark. Hey, how's it going? It's going great, Mark. Glad to have you here. And so what I understand, uh, Cantrade, that's C-A-N-N-T-R-A-D-E.com for those of you that want to follow along at home. Cantrade is a wholesale portaling system and CRM for the cannabis industry. Tell me a little bit more about that, Mark. Yeah, exactly that. So if you think of uh, there's, you know, there's CRMs out there, um, but the one problem with the cannabis industry is that there is this web of legality um, between different states along with different cities. So if you come to, say, California and you want to operate a CRM, you can use something standard out there, but it's not designed for this industry. It won't work properly. And ultimately, there's really no way that your clients can actually go purchase your product directly and then follow the legal steps required by the state. So that's what we do in each state. Um, we actually set up a, um, you know, a geofence. And within that state, when somebody purchases on one of these businesses wholesale portals that we provide and put on their website, um, it then steps the process through the legal required steps of the transaction. So take us through, uh, just as a, a quick example, what are some of these legal steps? So, okay, to give you an example out here in California. Um, now, real fast, uh, come January 1st, and I'm not sure when this will air, the entire regulatory model is completely flipping. Um, but how it stands right now is uh, Prop 215 and SB 420 required that a business is a nonprofit, mutually beneficial collective, and that they actually join the collectives to then be able to donate product between themselves for compensation. So if I have product, um, although it is, it is going to get simplified, like I said, the uh, California is completely flipping over its regulatory model to, uh, what is it, SB 643, along with uh, several other um, following bills. And that's going to actually license all the businesses and create a, um, a different license for each segment as far as extraction, manufacturing, different cultivation size. At the beginning of the year, it'll be different. Yeah. So it's okay, going to be it. much, much simpler because now, you know, as long as you're compliant with the state, which real fact, let me, let me step back. Sorry. It, it definitely is very confusing. So to get a state license in California, you have to have a local municipality license um, or, you know, CUP. So then you can then get your state temporary license where while they're going to review that, then issue them. But within our software, what we're able to do is we keep the standard system that we have right now until the state flips over. Then we require that all of the businesses that we work with to be a part of the trading within CanTrade and use our CRM and sales portal, um, they have to upload their temporary license that we then can review with the state. Then once they issue the, the final license, because that license, the temporary is good for 120 days, we can then, you know, check their legality, make sure that they are who they say they are and they're a verified business with the state of California, and then release them to be able to do two-way trading between other businesses in California. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, sounds like a, a complicated uh, legal landscape for sure. And so what your software does is is simplifies this uh, ability for businesses to interact with each other in the cannabis industry. Is that am I understanding that correctly? Exactly, exactly. Now, um, you know, it's the legal environment, and this this along with that, this is you know a this is a, a medicine that has been under prohibition for so long. So these types of connections within different industries or within other industries are established while in the cannabis industry, it's still very much a, who do you know? You don't really spread outside your network. And then at the same time, uh, these businesses don't necessarily have teams that are checking to verify the legality of other businesses. And that's one of the features that we offer within our system. So talk to me about uh, payment solutions. Uh, that's something that's very uh, hot topic in this industry because with with cannabis and uh, marijuana being illegal at the federal level, uh, you can't even get a bank account. You can't pay with a credit card. Um, you know, there's all kinds of legal challenges because uh, the uh, the federal government isn't able to actually insure that money. Um, so oh, yeah. uh, talk to me about some of the, the payment solutions that, that you've seen, and I think that your company is developing one, right? Uh, so our company is not developing one, but we're partnered with a company who is, and um, I'll tell you about that in a second. So, I mean, exactly the question you just asked, that's the multi-billion dollar question, and there has been a lot of companies uh, really going after that space. I have personally been pitched about 20 different payment solution companies because uh, our system right now is, is cash on delivery. And that's how the majority of the industry operates. Um, but so we want to find a way to make it safer to, um, you know, transact cash because it's, it really isn't safe when somebody is bringing, say, you know, a hundred thousand dollars in, in flour and they're bringing it to a dispensary. I mean, that just has trouble written all over it. So it's been our goal to get a payment solution on our system. That's why we've been reaching out to so many, but I have been pitched everything from, from, 8% 8% here off the top, off the bottom line to 15% to a personal bank account in another state or another country to, hey, we're going to take you on a private jet to fly over here and there. I'm like, wow, I absolutely not. Um, so it's actually our partner is Alt36 that has been tackling this challenge. And they are the ones who you know, presented us a solution that made sense. It has very low fees. It's, it's fast. You can transact cash. Uh, instantly and completely legally, um, and they are working uh, with Dash Digital Currency to uh, combat that solution. And, and you know, I really think it's a space that needs it. I mean, you're talking billions of dollars transacted, and it's still unbanked. Yeah, and for the most part, uh, you know, the, this this money is just like sitting under some guy's mattress or something right now. I mean, where are you going to put it? <laughs> where do you put it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I probably well, would, I wouldn't answer that question here on this podcast because you might have some gold diggers at your house. But <laughs> well, I can guarantee you, I don't have that money. But uh, you know, <laughs> can only imagine. I can only imagine what several million dollars looks like and looks like in tens and twenties. You know, that is not it's not a small amount of money, and it doesn't take up. It, and that definitely takes up a large volume of size. But um, what I've seen from the more from the professional, you know, fully legal businesses is they have they have vaults. You know they have a very uh, a very strict and uh, protocol with their cash and cash procedures. Um, but you know, don't get me wrong. There's people doing it the exact you know way you mentioned. So it's it's really interesting, and uh, you know, uh, we interview a lot of people in the cryptocurrency space, and it's kind of like this wild west of a, like a digital revolution, if you will. But uh, shortly before that became, you know mainstream and that hit the limelight the the thing everybody was talking about was the cannabis industry uh, mm -hmm. because all of a sudden there are uh, you probably know this better than I do something like 28 states that have legal uh, medical marijuana is that something like that is that about right yeah it's around that number honestly it, last I checked I think it was 29 but at the same 29 time, states it, 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 so it, it well, actually it was 28 or it could be 29 but at the same time the 
there's new laws going in place in so many different states and then it then it gets changed and then uh then a bill gets introduced and it's um, you know, it's a little bit tough to keep up with it. Yeah, so but right. So more than more than half. Um, and yeah. the the point is that uh, it becoming this revolution, and and at some point it's inevitable that it's going to be legal at the federal level, and that will explode this new opportunity of development. And and that and that was kind of picking up steam, and then it got it's gotten overshadowed by you know Bitcoin going up, you know, two thousand percent in the last year or something like that. Yeah. And uh. And and now everybody's talking about that, but don't forget about the fact that um, there's this entire industry here where there was a full legalization in Colorado, there was a full legalization in uh, Washington, uh, and you know there was this windfall of of capital that came into the state in the form of uh, you know an excise tax, if you. Will. So this industry is still going to be kind of the the king. Uh, once once things really pick up steam here and it is fully legal because you've got billions of dollars of cash just sitting in some guy's basement and he needs somewhere to put it. Yeah, and um, I believe I just heard uh, uh, some uh, some market research came out yesterday and said that I think the industry hit above ten billion dollars in retail sales um, for this last year. So. It has actually exceeded its expectations. At the same time, you gotta understand there's still, you know, how big is the illicit market right now that that is not being calculated, and that is huge. Uh, but you know, there's a lot of money in this. One thing I'd like to preface with it is that, you know, I truly believe that this is not only a medicine but a health supplement. Um, I mean, it's it's helped me. I've seen it help so many people. And uh, although beyond just that, you know, it's it's a medicine, a health supplement, but it's also other things. I mean, it's textiles. It's it's breaking into a completely other industry. You can make feed with it. You can make fuel. You know, so as far as uh, the growth potential of the industry, it's just. I mean, I, I don't know where to cap it. It's it's huge. So talk to me a little bit about the the development of your technology. Obviously, there was a need, uh, but let's let's kind of dig into. The, the ones and zeros a little bit and you know what how how long have you been in development what kind of challenges have you run into just kind of to give us a background here okay yeah so um i mean the concept and idea i actually thought about this about five years ago um i was in i've been in the industry for about six years although i am not the software engineer so um, I knew that I didn't have the chops to make this, and this idea was never going to become anything. It was just something I had written down. It wasn't until about two and a half years ago I was approached by some software engineer friends of mine um, at the at a local gym, and they love cannabis. They were interested in getting into you know producing some type of software for them, and they wanted to make like a point of sale system. And at the time. I was like, oh, absolutely not. You know, we, this is exactly what I need because I was out on the ground uh, designing, developing products, representing products in shops, and trying to deal with this connection and management of clients. Um, and that was hard enough. You know, I was using a system. I was using Salesforce. Everybody's familiar with that. But trying to uh, modify that for this industry just was not working. And then the other hardest challenge that I had at the time was uh, getting contacted by businesses that are just not operating, I'd say, legally or, or may, most likely just we'll call it gray area. Um, and also getting contacted from businesses and, and just people in other states, which is, you know, a complete no-no. So um, I needed a system that not only did the Salesforce stuff, but also made sure that the businesses that I was talking to and, and working with were verified. So that's what I outlined for the guys, and then we we started working on it. We wired it all up. Um, we released our our MVP. Um, I think it was March of this year, um, and then we've been developing it ever since, based off of what our clients, you know, are communicating back to us. Okay. And uh, so let me ask you this: uh, as as you were developing this, uh, you you saw the need, and you know, Salesforce for those of you who aren't familiar is a uh, Customer relationship management platform. That's what CRM stands for. Uh, for 
sales professionals, and uh, it has a wide variety of uses. And but in this particular industry, uh, you were having to modify it so much that it just made more sense to build your own. Yes. Yeah. Exactly that. And then you know, there's really the two things that systems like that, because of the the legality, the you know, the illicitness of the the market previously under prohibition and and people and ultimately large businesses hesitation to get into this industry. Um, there's two things that our system does that these other systems will never do. And that is the verification of a business and um, the direct purchasing. So being able to actually initiate the purchase and follow that purchase through the, the legal steps. Okay. Got it. So looking ahead, um, you know, you have your finger on the pulse to, of this industry. What would you say uh, is going to happen in the next 12 months? And what would you say is going to happen in the next five years? And you can answer about tech. You can answer about you know, legal things. You can answer about the industry as a whole, however you want to answer it. But I'd like to see you know, somebody who is in this every day. What's going to happen in, in 2018 and what's going to happen five years down the road? Okay. Wow. I mean... <laughs> That is a, that's not a short, it's not a small question by any means. Um, I'm going to have to go in general terms. I mean, exponential growth, you still have not only, you know, how you have more adult use markets coming online. So like I said, for example, January, January 2nd is actually, uh, or January 1st technically, but is California is coming online with adult use. And that is ultimately the largest cannabis market in the world. Um, and then along with that, you still have, I mean, I believe it's nine states right now, eight states, um, not sure off the top of my head, but uh, you have all of these other states in the country that either have some form of medical, no medical at all, and they could come online, or, you know, they're looking into some form of recreational use. So um, as far as California goes, there's so much growth expansion within the different markets. But and then you look outside, or sorry, not California, as far as the country goes, but then you look outside of the country and you have Canada legalizing nationally, you have Canada establishing uh, trade in Germany, Israel, um, you have Israel going uh, deep into the actual genealogy of the plants, uh, doing their, their initiating patents, uh, you know, studying the medical efficacy of terpenoids, uh, cannabinoids. So... I mean, it is just going to be, it's really going to be a hockey stick graph moving forward as far. And, and I guess one of the most exciting things with it is, um, you know, we, I, I believe it was uh, back in the 80s, I'm not sure about that, but discover, we just discovered the endocannabinoid system and how that reacts, um, you know, works within the body and how the cannabinoids combine or uh, uh, bind to receptors and ultimately we're still studying the effects of all these different cannabinoids and same thing with the combination of cannabinoids with terpenoids and how they work within the body and how they affect, you know, you medically, as far as if you have, if you have a headache or if you, you know, are, are nauseous or you're a cancer patient or you have chronic pain, um, we're going to start to make, they're going to start to make breakthrough, breakthroughs ultimately that's really going to help people and, and, you know, help us better understand how this plant can be used as medicine. Very good. And uh, so we appreciate you coming on talking about this uh, very important topic uh, that affects millions of people. Uh, and, uh, you know, eventually uh, we, would, we would assume that um, the, the powers that be will legalize the substance and, and hopefully reduce the burden on law enforcement and uh, all of those people out there who, you know, need need this drug uh, and those who just want to use it recreationally. So I appreciate you coming on here. Mark Ristelli from cantrade.com. That's C-A-N-N-T-R-A-D-E.com. Any final thoughts for our audience before we go? Um, you know, I, I'd just like to say if if you are against, or sorry, if, if anybody out there is, is against, say, cannabis or the industry, just try to, you know, open your mind, listen and, and read about it a lot more because the, the benefit that it is providing to patients across the world uh, far outweighs the expectations of any negative consequences. Um, you know, truly, this would be completely mainstream if it wasn't 
prohibited, you know, 80, 80 to 100 years ago. Um, and I do believe that it would be more popular than, say, alcohol, probably not caffeine, but um, and uh, obviously definitely tobacco. And I think that it would be so mainstream that you would have, instead of having a, uh, a cocktail bar at a wedding or at a party, you would have a weed bar. And, you know, I think that we're going to start to see that progress in the future 20, 20, 30 years from now. I don't I think it's going to be exactly like that. Interesting perspective. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess the just to follow up on that, uh, you know, have have you been to any weddings in Colorado where uh, they have weed bars at the reception? <laughs> I've not been I've not been to those weddings, but I've been to plenty of the weed bar parties. Um, and, okay. and they're definitely fun, but I have to yeah. say the, the weed bar parties, the crowd is not nearly as rowdy as, uh, you know, if they're serving, uh, shots of fireball. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then everybody gets really hungry after a while. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, if you're, if you're at a, if you're at a party like that and they don't have food being served, then you're at the wrong party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. This has been great, Mark. Thanks so much for joining us. And thank you to our audience. We'll see you next time here at the Future Tech Podcast. The Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Blockchain Super Conference is coming to Dallas, Texas, February 16, 17, and 18 in 2018. If you know of a better way to get the latest insider knowledge about crypto, to hear directly from the top minds in this field, to interact personally with 800 fellow crypto lovers, hodlers, investors, miners, traders, developers, and founders, then I'd like to hear about it. If you don't, then you don't want to miss out. Register today for the Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Blockchain Super Conference. Go to BitcoinSuperConference.com and register today as a super early bird to get the lowest rates on tickets and hotel rooms. That's BitcoinSuperConference.com. You have been listening to Almost Here, Around the Corner Future Technology Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Subscribe to this podcast, both to review, to discover more future technologies that are poised to transform our lives for better or worse, such as Bitcoin, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more.